Okay, welcome everybody to Go in 5 Minutes, Episode 3. So today we're going to talk about a requested topic, uh, which is Gorilla Mux. So this uh, screencast today will build on a previous one called Building a RESTful API with NetHTTP. But it's not strictly necessary that you've seen that one, although it may help. So Gorilla Mux is an implementation of HTTP Handler, which is in the standard library. But it can do some more complex request handling and uh, request, uh, excuse me, and path matching. And Gorilla Mux also fits in pretty well with other libraries in the Gorilla ecosystem, which, besides sounding kind of funny, uh, those libraries are pretty powerful. And they do things like handling sessions and doing complex cookie encryptions. So let's get right into some code. Uh, we've got our server here, which is kind of a sample implementation of a reservation and releasing system that you might see in, uh, to handle the physical servers in a cloud computing system. So as you can see below, we've got a map of our physical servers. We've got a read-write mutex to protect that map. Down on line 35, we create our router, and then we immediately specify an HTTP handler to handle cases where none of the paths below match. So down here, we've got a router that will, uh, excuse me, we've got a subrouter that will handle, first of all, all requests that come in with a content type of application JSON. Down here in our subrouter, we are handling a get, post, or delete on paths that look like slash API and then any variable string. And then down below, we've got a subrouter that matches that same header. But then we execute a function on the request if it's matched, and the function checks an API, uh, excuse me, in a min token header. And then, of course, there are the paths that will be checked if that subrouter has matched. So that's really just about it for the path handling. As you can see, it can be pretty complex, and there are even more features that I haven't shown here. And then, if we go and check out one of our handlers, it looks almost exactly like a standard one with the exception of this vars function. And the vars function is simply to get the request variables that I had shown earlier uh, out of the path. And the vars function just simply returns a map. So you can interact with the return value just as you would use it, uh, excuse me, just, just as you would interact with any other standard Go map. So let's go in and actually run this server and test things out. So we'll go build it. Just like any other server, it's built. We'll run the server, serving on port 8080, and then we've got our sample commands here. So we'll just prove that uh, we're going to get the Alice server, and we'll prove that it's got zero reservations and it is not currently reserved. Let's go and reserve it. Okay, one reservation, and it's currently reserved. And then let's use our admin endpoint to get the status of every single server. So you can see Alice, one current reservation, and it is currently reserved. Bob, zero and not currently reserved. And Carol, same exact thing. Now let's release all servers using that admin endpoint. So as you can see, the current status, Alice, one reservation total, not reserved. Bob, zero and not reserved. And then Carol, same thing as Bob. And now let's go in and we're going to reserve a server like we did before. And we'll get all servers again. And there you go. Alice 2 total, currently reserved. Bob 0 and not currently reserved. And Carol 0, not currently reserved. Now let's look at that not, uh, the not found handler. So let's go in here. Let's try to reserve a server that doesn't exist not a server. And there you can see 404 not found and we've got no such server which was handled in that specific uh, excuse me that specific get server handler. And then let's try to get a path that just plain doesn't exist to, to uh, exercise that not found handler. An a, uh, endpoint called no path and we've got our 404 here and a slash no path not found response body. So that's about it for the, uh, the simple, at least, features of Gorilla Mux. So as I said at the beginning here, if we go back to our Gorilla server, you can see that where we pass router in to listen and serve, 
Listen and Serve is expecting just a plain, uh, plain HTTP handler. So you can actually swap out any of your HTTP handler implementations with Gorilla Mux. And then even more powerfully, uh, if you have any routes in your HTTP handle or HTTP handle func uh, calls in your server setup, you can swap any of those out with Gorilla Mux as well. So it allows you some flexibility to pick and choose. So I'd encourage you to go in and see if it makes sense in your code base to pick and choose some places to try out Gorilla Mux if you haven't already. So I uh, hope you guys tune in next week. Uh, we're going to cover a WebSocket implementation next, next week. So I uh, hope to see you there. Take care.